My name is Sue Christie, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, adding wireless sensors uh, to your IoT system using MQTT. So today's agenda, we have um, a bit of a hardware architecture, um, some software overview. Um, we've got a few debug options, um, and then um, we've deployed 10 of these systems um, at, a, at a conference. So um, we'll go over some of the lessons we learned there. And then uh, some resources for developers, if you want to build one of these yourself, uh, and some Q&A. Um, so for anybody that's late in joining, I'm going to read the abstract, uh, which hopefully matches the agenda. Um, and if you've come to the wrong class, then you'll be able to understand from the abstract what is this. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a much more interesting class than uh, the Movidius class that's running adjacent to mine. Um, so connecting wired sensors to an IoT gateway is, may not always be the best choice for some scenarios. So today we will deep dive onto implementation of an untethered solar power monitoring system. Um, we'll learn how to add wireless sensors to a system using an MQTT broker um, as an intermediary, and then we will show how to import those sensor data into Node-RED um, on an Intel gateway. And then you can display them locally, um, or you can publish them to the cloud. And then we will finish off with some resources and also show you how to use some Android apps, recommended apps, to help debug this uh, pub-sub process. So we're going to start uh, basically at the end with um, the fully assembled kit. Um, this is what we built up. Um, it's got six major components. You can see there from top to bottom the solar panel the RGB LCD. Um, we have a, um, a Sonair Plus um, solar charger board, uh, a Grove base shield, an Arduino board with an Edison on it there, and, and a LiPo battery. Um, there are five major functions that are developed in this. The wireless sensing, obviously, um, the solar power and the battery, um, the MQTT publication and subscription, um, we're using Node-RED for the data gathering, and then uh, the last piece is the iOS and the Android apps um, that we've used to help um, with this MQTT debug. Um, one of the reasons for going with a, a wireless device, or several reasons, um, wireless devices um, can be used to display more than, say, just one analog value. You can put a complex uh, set of data through there. So three-axis accelerometer, for example, with X, Y, and Z direction. Um, for, to do that, an analog values, you'd need three analog sensors. Um, MQTT is the same. We can subscribe to multiple topics. Um, and in this instance, we have 12 topics coming out of this, uh, this sensor assembly here. Uh, so let's move on to the, the next slide. And we'll show you, we'll break it down a bit more. Um, so Grove kits. Um, from uh, from Seed Studio. Uh, there are quite a few kits now. Um, we started with the Intel Edison. Uh, we have several gateway kits available. Uh, there are Amazon AWS kits, uh, Microsoft Azure kits. Um, they've been so successful that um, say imitation is a sincere form of flat rate. So there's even a Raspberry Pi based IoT uh, kit. And I think you can get a BeagleBall kit from Seed Studio with similar sensors and things. And all of these kits have a shield for connecting sensors um, and a varying set of uh, sensors and actuators. And for this project, I'm using the base shield, the button, and the, the LCD RGB that's got the RGB backlight. So just the three components here. Uh, the solar hardware, I've got a little bit more detail there. Um, the solar panel, um, the one that we've shown here is uh, it's about three three point five watts, and um, you know if it's in bright sunlight, you get about six volts. Um, the LiPo battery, um, uh, I got one with a JST connector. The board I've got has got JST connectors. I had to modify the solar panel. Um, it came with a with a different connector, um, but you can see there on the the solar charger. Um, we have a battery and a solar panel connector. There are these small JST ones. Um, there's a uh, support for an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, uh, actually any device that will support I2C on the charger. Uh, the USB out is the load. Um, 
So when you switch the system on, the either the solar panel or the battery or a combination of the two will supply whatever's required by that USB out um, up to about 500 milliamps. Uh, actually, I think about 10 amp or so, if necessary. Um, there's a USB in. You can see there in the bottom um, of the uh, bottom left of the charger board. Uh, there's a USB. Um, those are for people who are not in Arizona, like I am. Uh, and you can charge the battery if there's uh, if there's no sun available, um, so it's an auxiliary um, power input uh, to allow you to to charge it. Um, the next slide shows, which is slide uh, slide six, shows uh, the Gro Grove baseboard. Um, this is a, a fairly standard device that plugs into uh, any Arduino board, but we're using an Edison board, an Edison Arduino board here. Um, and we're using uh, uh, three connectors, basically. Um, the RGB LCD has two I2C devices that share a, a cable. Um, one is the LCD itself uh, for the, obviously the text messages. And the other one is the RGB LED. Um, it's at a different address and that allows you to change the background color on the, on the LCD. Um, the Sun Air Plus um, solar panel charger um, has um, uh, several I2C devices on it. We're just using the uh, the device at uh, the address X address zero X forty. Um, this is a I'd say it's a six channel um, high end, um, and I mean high end by high voltage um, uh, A to D converter for specifically for reading um, voltage and current um, off of batteries and, and other devices. Um, and then we've also uh, got a test mode switch that's plugged into A3. Um, analog ports, uh, A3 is an analog port uh, by definition or by default, um, but any of the analog ports on an Arduino board uh, can be used as a digital input, and that's what we've used here. Um, instead of 0 through 14, you get, you no, know, no, number, number 17 is a, a digital input. So I've plugged a switch in there. Um, because it's easy to access, I can plug and unplug it. Uh, so we've got a digital switch on um, uh, on that A3 connection, even though it says analog three. So um, putting input devices. Hold on, we'll try and get to the next slide. No, oh, too far. Double click. Let's go back. So um, MQTT input um, uh, node red, um, which is uh, an IDE um, or a Graphical Programming um, IDE uh, has built-in support for the MQT um, brokers. It's got a push um, for sending data out and a subscribe for getting data into the, the gateways. Um, so the Edison solar panel system will be publishing. Um, it uses an Arduino sketch and the gateway is subscribing uh, to the broker. The broker in this instance is running on the Edison. Um, it's it's called the broker by definition. On this slide here, you can see um, it's it's connected to a server or it's running on a server, and the server in this instance is uh, is the Edison. Um, you can there are publicly available brokers for MQTT. Eclipse has got a few out there. Um, there are test ones. Um, there are ones available. You can run them up on a, on a cloud service. Um, features that I'm not using in this um, are the the LWT, the last will and testament. Uh, these are sign on and sign off messages. Um, in the, the GUI there from um, Nodred, they're called birth and will messages. Um, and the will literally is you know, the, your will and testament. Um, the QS, we're not using quality of service. We're just uh, going with a standard uh, piece there. And we haven't enabled any of the the TLS, the transport layer security at this point. So the security, the birth message, and the will message tabs are, are not used. And really, we're just typing in the IP address or, or a name for the um, for the Edison. So software setup. Um, we've got uh, several pieces of code that are running um, on the Edison. And um, you know, I'll describe those in a bit. This will take a bit longer than than the previous slides. Um, so basically, there's a sketch that's um, running on the Edison um, when the uh, when the program starts up. Um, 
we've uh, it's pre-compiled to match the IP address that the Edison is connected to. So you have to connect up your device um, to the infrastructure where you are. Um, it's one of these things, if you move something around, you move your server, you have to um, uh, get a new IP address. So the sketch.elf, this first one here is, is needs to match the IP address uh, wherever you're installing your system. Um, this is something I'd like to change in the future, but that's that's what it is right now. Um, it runs at the at startup. There's a system D enabled um, Python service that runs a small Python script um, that I've used to output the IP address to the console, so I can you know connect to it if I need to, um, and make sure that it's uh, it's got the same IP address or the right IP address. Um, it then calls the sketch.elf um, if I have not pressed the diagnostic button, this E3 button. And uh, if it fails for any reason, um, it will exit and this uh, Python script will uh, will restart the uh, every 30 seconds or so. Um, the second half of the, the, the slide there says if A3 on, we run this hotspot code. Um, the Edison, um, can be uh, flipped into a hotspot mode. Uh, so instead of connecting to uh, a hotspot, it can become a hotspot itself. And there's a fixed IP address, um, 192.168.42.1. It's one of those numbers that you know, um, all of the evangelists at Intel uh, know by heart now. And uh, that allows us to test the device without having to connect it to, a, uh, to an infrastructure. Uh, so we can plug in a switch, press the button, and when that switch is uh, detected, um, it will print out a message on the RGB LCD and, and run a separate sketch. Um, the, the Edison, because it's running Linux, um, can run multiple sketches or it can run alternate sketches. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're doing here. So there's one called sketch.elf, the standard one, and then there's another one called hotspot.elf, if you see down the towards the lowest of the slide. And that's what's run if uh, if we're running some diagnostic tests on the board. So the next slide shows the software sketches that were used to uh, to get the system up and running. Um, there were two projects um, that were combined. Uh, there's an MQTT library. Uh, there are several available. Um, Adafruit makes a few. Um, this one here um, I found uh, was recommended, so I went and and downloaded that. That's got several uh, different examples. Um, so INO files. No, oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> several INO files that uh, with examples um, that you can run um, to test out that it's you no know, things are working. Um, there's also from uh, Switch Doc Labs. Uh, we call it here SDL, or they call themselves SDL. Um, there's an Arduino sketch that uh, that can read the INA3221, which is this uh, high-end uh, voltage monitor. Um, you can run them separately. Um, and that's what I recommend if you build one of these. As you run them, you get them working in order to make sure everything's going. Um, and if you see there on the right-hand side, uh, there's the Arduino uh, console output. Um, it shows um, uh, the spelling mistake the shut resistor which should say shunt resistor um, and that's a uh, it's a point one ohm um, the uh, I, the i2c address uh, 64 uh, that we mentioned earlier and then uh, four parameters from each uh, each of the devices so the lipo battery the solar cell itself and the the output usb um, so the lipo battery is sitting at 4.1 volts um, the output voltage is nominally 5 volts um, because the uh, solar cell is, um, beg your pardon, not, not got much light on at the moment, uh, it's not charging the battery. So there's um, 157 milliamps being um, output by the battery. Um, and if you notice, the time that comes out at 4 volts, it's 157. Um, the time it's converted and made into a 4.88, it's, it's obviously 112 milliamps. So, but the same sort of power there, but you can see the, the consistency of these readings. Um, when you combine these two programs, uh, it was fairly simple. You know, it literally was uh, a, a simple thing. Um, we haven't published the whole 
uh, slides yet, or uh, rather the sketch yet. Um, we will in the future, but we're working through some some bugs and some features in it. Um, when you do that, um, the switch doc lab code from the A to D returns uh, a 16-bit signed integer, so plus or minus current. Um, and QTT libraries accept, expect strings, so um, integers to string conversion. Um, that's been a little bit of fun trying to find the correct libraries within Arduino, but uh, it's uh, it, uh, it's really, really easy to do. Um, well, I keep jumping two, through two slides at a time. Here we go. So um, this is the actual uh, piece of code from the um, the Arduino sketch that publishes um, these these topics. Um, so again, we had twelve uh, channels read from the A to D. Um, some of them have been calculated, um, the the current obviously, um, and that's calculated using the 0.1 ohm uh, resistor scaling value, um, and we published all just all 12 of them. So a lipo um, with a subtopic of bus voltage, shunt voltage, load voltage, and current, and you can see them there. And then similarly for the solar uh, panel, and then for the load, which is the USB uh, 5 volt output. Um, one of the things I'd like to uh, like to highlight there is um, the the piece at the bottom of the slide. So um, we've uh, we developed this um, using um, the the Arduino uh, the Edison board, um, and I see in some of the questions already that you no, know, yeah, I think Intel have this uh, disconnect. Dis uh, I can't quite read the writing, but yeah, we have dis. Uh, we are no longer making the Edison boards. Um, Obviously, we work at Intel. I've got several of them in the drawer. So we built, started building with this with the Edison. Um, the same set of code compiles nicely for an ESP8266. Um, so here it's a Fire Beetle board from uh, DF Robot that we've compiled it for. Um, I've I've not gone much beyond that. Um, what I've managed to do is uh, stub out the I2C pieces um, and it runs and I can get topics uh, displayed on the, or subscribed to or published by the the ESP8266 uh, board. So that's the, the plans for the future is to move to a, a different microprocessor um, as we use up our, our uh, in-house stock of, uh, of Edison boards. And we'll move on to slide 11. Um, we're going to show how we subscribe uh, to a topic on the gateway. Um, uh, you need to have, uh, if you're using them locally, you need to have the gateway and the Edison sensor on the same subnet, um, or the gateway and the Edison will need to be connected to the internet and they can reach one another, um, via, or they need to be able to reach the broker. Um, that's the common part. So if the broker is an Eclipse one or it's one at Arduino, um, it's IoT piece that that works fine, or sorry, Adafruit's IoT piece, that works fine. Um, but for these examples, we built them up. We have the broker running in the Edison, so we had to have the gateway and the Edison on the on the same subnet. Um, the, uh, the screen, the second half of the screen there shows um, the, the small flow that's required to read um, the, the LiPo current. Um, there are two MQTT nodes uh, shown there. Um, the LiPo current, um, sort of the middle of the screen with the connected tag, is the input uh, from the Edison. And, and the LiPo, uh, one on the bottom right, also with the connected tag, um, is an output node that's used by the gateway uh, to display sensor values on, on its dashboard. Um, and the debug node, uh, which has the message payload highlighted in the top right, um, is used to read the values. We're using that for debug, and that shows 570, and that's 570 milliamps um, on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, these are fairly easy to to connect to. You no, know, you you drag them in, you connect them up, um, you do that. Um, I'm not going to give any much more info on, on Node Red. Um, if you want more info about Node Red, uh, Nick O'Leary, the co-creator of Node Red, uh, gave a keynote uh, at the beginning of the Dev Fest. Um, well, firstly, it was 3 a.m. in Arizona time. Um, so, um, no, watch the replay. You'll have missed it unless, you, unless you're in the, the, um, the UK or whatever. Um, 
I can also recommend um, the NodeRedGuide.com. Um, that's a, a great set of tutorials that are hosted by a company called Sense Technic. Um, they make a Node Red hosted solution. So if you'd like to try some things out there, and they've got a free option, and then they will even um, you know they'll go from there and uh, do uh, uh, paid subscriptions to uh, a hosted Node Red uh, cloud. Um, but I would, I would highly recommend you have a look there if you're looking for more info on, um, you know, what are the different options within these uh, these different nodes that are there. So as we we're saying, we've got 570 milliamps. If we go on to the next slide, you can see the dashboard, and you, again, you can see the same um, flow in the bottom. Um, so the dashboard there, uh, showing LiPo current. Uh, it shows the change as the solar panel is placed into the sunlight. So it was just charging, uh, just minus 620 or so, 650 uh, milliamps. And then uh, we placed it in the sunlight and um, we're now, um, uh, now at 570 milliamps of uh, charging. Um, so um, flow one, which is, is not shown, it's, uh, it's there on the tab as well. Um, is is used to display the onboard sensors or the uh, the connected sensors. So you can see the rotary sensor um, is used there, and the the flow two in the foreground is reading the the lipo current uh, via MQTT and, and publishing it to the dashboard. So there are various uh, other connectors you can use, other functions you can use to connect this system on out to. Um, Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, um, GE Predix. This is actually a GE Predix uh, system that we've been running it on here. Um, there are other classes with that. There are other inf a lot more information up on um, Intel Developer Zone on how to connect those uh, pieces up. And I've got some links in a few uh, slides following um, to how on how to do that. Um, so we're going to change gears slightly and look at the lessons that we learned as we deployed some of these systems out into the uh, the field. Um, well, I'll call it field. It was actually a conference uh, where we took 10 of these devices um, uh, for users to, to use uh, in the hackathon. Um, so um, one of the things we learned um, was obviously shipping. Um, you're using LiPo batteries. Um, you have to disconnect everything before you ship it. And that, in some ways, led to some of the issues that we had uh, with testing because we didn't put all the batteries in the case and test everything. Uh, things were tested uh, in different manners. Um, they were uh, they were tested with a battery. We plugged in a the, um, the solar panel, but there was not enough uh, light in the room to turn on the solar panel and charge things. So everything appeared to be working. We could read voltage from the solar panel, we could read voltage from the battery, um, we could switch on the load and get five volts out. Everything seemed to be great. We take it to the, the conference. Um, there was lots of light coming in, the solar panel started charging and things started to, to go haywire. Um, so the, the real lesson learned here is that uh, one sample or one scenario um, is, is not enough. Um, once the devices are, are packaged, which they were for shipping and everything, um, we put them in a smaller case. Um, as opposed to being on a bench, um, we started to get what we believe is um, EMI, RFI interference. Um, so future plans are to put things in a, in a metal case, do some shielding uh, on pieces like that. Um, and also um, to test them in different scenarios charging, not charging, um, all of those, uh, all of the different um, test use cases uh, where we would be liking to use these. And again, build more than one. Um, we built 10, we tested them all the same way, um, but uh, you know, when you get out to the field and try these things, um, uh, that's when you find out, um, you know, that's when you get your lessons. Um, in a similar uh, manner, um, you know, when we deploy software, um, we'll we'll test it with you know ten or fifteen engineers as opposed to just the one person who's developing it. And then we've done similar things with when we take these systems out to these gateways out to um, customers for workshops. Uh, the first workshop, um, we always let people know 
This is the first deployment where we have 40 devices in the same room, uh, all trying to connect to the same Wi-Fi. Um, so we may have issues there. So, um, you know, deploying, uh, building one of these devices, uh, it's reasonably easy getting the first one going. Uh, building 10 or multiple of these is, uh, is something to watch out for. And it's uh, it's one of the things that we'd, we'd like to um, make you aware of uh, as you're going to build some of these. Um, next slide has some of the debug tools. Um, these are the ones that, that I use. There are um, a lot more. There are screenfuls of these. Uh, if you go to um, the Google Play or the iOS uh, Apple Store uh, and type in MQTT, you will find um, more than enough. These are a few that I've used. Um, MQTT Dash um, is a nice one for um, developing dashboards. Uh, it's probably better suited to a tablet um, because it will create a nice dashboard. Um, and it's got icons, it's got graphs, it's got pictures. You can set up a nice looking dashboard and, um, and gather all the data. Um, the MQTT Snooper is more of a device or a program for uh, getting started. Um, it's uh, text only that it spits out, um, but it will spit out everything from a uh, uh, that's being published. The MQTT dash, you have to type in you know, LiPo slash solar panel or whatever. You need the whole syntax correct. The MQTT snooper, you can say to it, show me everything that's been published by this broker. And uh, you will find that in addition to all of the things that you're publishing, the MQTT broker is also publishing a lot of information. Um, how long it's been alive, how many clients are connected, uh, you know, uh, a lot more diagnostic information that I wasn't aware of uh, was being published um, at the time. So that's, uh, these are a couple of programs out there. Um, the two on the right, uh, Mos Mosquito Sub and Mosquito Pub, um, Mosquito is the broker, uh, the open source broker that we were using on the, the Edison. Um, uh, Mosquito Sub is a, an MQTT client um, that will subscribe to a topic and print any messages it receives. Um, you type in the host name if it's running locally, you don't even need to run a local host, but you can type in the host name and the message topic um, and it will print it out and you know, if it's subscribed every, uh, updated every five seconds, you get a little message every five seconds. So it's a good one just to keep keep going. And then Mosquito Pub um, is uh, similar, but it will publish messages um, to that uh, to that broker. Um, I would recommend using some of these. Um, if everything's working, it's great. Um, if something breaks, because this is a pub sub um, device, you cannot be sure if there's something being published and it's not being subscribed to, or if there's been something that's being subscribed and it's not being published. So um, once the communication breaks down, it's very difficult to figure out where the break is. Um, once it's working, you don't need to know. It's one of those uh, chicken and egg situations. So um, having some tools like these that can um, you know, be the man in the middle, um, are highly recommended and uh, it was very necessary. Um, going forward. Um, so we're, we're getting to the resource um, page now. Um, so um, some of the things we'll talk about are future plans, uh, where you can buy the hardware if you want to build one of these, um, some GitHub links, um, and then some technical references that just got a bit more info on um, uh, MQTT or Node-RED, uh, things like that. Uh, so future plans. Um, so as I say, the Arduino code uh, compiles nicely for the ESP8266. Um, so that's one of the plans is uh, to um, make a smaller, uh, lower cost version. Um, if you notice there are extra sensors, uh, we can add extra sensors to that Grove uh, shield. Um, temperature and sunlight are two obvious ones that we'd like to add. Um, the uh, solar panel and battery charging um, are temperature dependent. Um, so we'll, we'll add some sensors there. Um, the, the device itself, uh, if you notice there, has uh, a couple of photo cells pins, R photo and L photo, and uh, a servo output. Um, 
many solar panel systems uh, can be aligned or can be driven by servos to align themselves more closely to the, the sun. And the right and left photo cells are used to, to determine that. Um, they have a um, they put a little blockage in the way, put some of the devices in sh in the shade, and they they flip back and forth, and you can drive the uh, solar panel to be more closely aligned uh, directly to the sun. Um, we'll deploy security, uh, the, the TLS uh, and uh, last will features in the MQTT. Um, and those will be there um, really for the plug and play. The, the last will features um, allow um, messages to be de sent or detected or output by the gateways whenever something goes wrong. So whenever the, the device does not properly disconnect, um, the uh, the last will message will be presented and that will um, uh, allow the user to detect, say, the Wi-Fi is going down or you know the battery connector has fallen off or something is not working and there's an error occurred. Um, so that's, uh, that's one of the things uh, that we'd like to do. Um, if you have any other suggestions, any other things you'd like to see, um, you know, please add those uh, to the chat window. Um, now we're looking for some feedback on uh, what we, where we should take this uh, device next. So where can you buy this hardware? Uh, this is where we bought it. Um, there are <laughs> there are multiple resources. Um, Adafruit was the the battery. Um, uh, C Studio. Um, this link is for the commercial developer kit. Um, so that's the gateway. Um, but the, the sensors and everything are in there. Um, say there are several um, several different versions available um, at Seed. Um, Switch Doc Labs. Um, that that's the link for their um, the solar charger tracker. Um, there is a newer version out with um, uh, Grove connectors on it as opposed to uh, pin headers, uh, similar functionality. Um, but there's there's various ones there. Um, and then the solar panel um, was one of the ones, uh, you know, finding solar panels and getting them was, uh, uh, we went to Amazon. Um, the, uh, um, the, the usual manufacturers or the ones that were recommended by Switch Doc Labs were, were not available, so we went uh, to there. So if you do build a device, um, please uh, send me a photo. Um, my email and my Twitter handle is there. Um, we'd like to know how you get on. Um, you know, uh, any, no, if you use any of these components, you know, if you drop in a Raspberry Pi instead of an Edson, uh, please let us know. And uh, we'd like to see how, how things are going. So GitHub links. Um, we've given the first two already, the MQTT library itself, um, and then the switch.labs or Arduino examples. Um, they also have JavaScript code available um, if you'd like to do a different uh, different build or different style of build. Um, that's all available as well um, up on GitHub. Um, the MRA and the UPM sensor libraries, um, I put those in there. Um, I was using those for the Python um, script at the beginning. Um, the MRA libraries and the UPM sensor libraries um, support over 300 sensors these days. Um, uh, you know, the Grove sensors, DF robot, Adafruit parts, um, some industrial sensors. Um, and an incidental thing was that um, we just launched a board last week, the up squared board, um, beginning of uh, November there. Um, and uh, it uses um, Arduino Create, um, the Arduino IDE, online IDE. And uh, the EMRA libraries are supported now by the Arduino. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend you have a look there um, if you plan on adding some different sensors um, to uh, one of these systems that you're building yourself. So technical information. Uh, this is, um, uh, there's a manual there from the uh, Switch.Labs Labs on the connectors and the features and the functionalities of the uh, the board. Um, Mosquito.org has a lot more information on um, the MQTT broker that I used. Um, the, uh, the seed RGB LCD, I've just put the link up there um, for that one. And then um, the little Python example 
um, that are used to um, to run the diagnostics, to run the, the auto start. Um, when we power the board on to detect if we should be running diagnostic modes. Um, and the final link at the bottom there is an, an MQTT search that I did on uh, Intel Developer Zone. And you can see the results on the left. Um, 32 articles, 15 blog posts, uh, and 51 sets of, of documentation. Uh, and those have uh, a lot of information on how you can connect an MQTT system to AWS, an MQTT system to IBM Bluemix, um, to Microsoft Azure, um, uh, how to program some more stuff in Node-RED. So there's a lot more resources available upon Intel Developer Zone, and I highly recommend you you have a look there. Uh, say software.intel.com um, slash IoT um, is the main page, but if you, you just go there uh, and do a search for MQTT, that's you'll find a, a lot more information available. Um, we're, we've come to the end of the, the presentation, really, um, and um, I'm going to go through and uh, have a look, see what we've got in the way of uh, Q&A. If MD's um, got some questions they'd like to ask about this project or um, anything else, um, please put them in there. So I think the only one that I've seen so far is I thought Intel dis discontinued the Edison, which is correct. Um, it's uh, it's no longer being manufactured. I think uh, through September was the um, the last um, call for builds. If you if you need to buy some, although there are um, no there are fifty or so kits, I believe um, up on Seed Studio. If you go and have a look, uh, they've still got stock and everything. So there's still pieces available if uh, you're looking for some. Okay, so one of the questions come in says. Gateway software to use with MQTT, any recommendations? Uh, the one I recommend um, is the one I've used um, is uh, the Node-RED. Uh, that's running on uh, an Intel gateway, which is running WindRiver Linux. Um, but Node-RED will run on pretty much anything. Um, so um, runs on Mac, Windows, uh, laptops. Um, if your gateway is running Ubuntu, run on Ubuntu as well. So um, Node-RED is a good one to get going, um, uh, but MQT is um, it's fairly ubiquitous. If you do the search, as I did, as I showed towards the end of the last slides, um, you will see the very first one is how to program C++ to do MQTT um, on a gateway. So um, various languages, um, lots of libraries that support MQTT. Um, and the other one is, let's see, we've got a question. Um, what is the role of an IoT evangelist in Intel? Um, well, you're, you're watching it. Um, our job is to uh, teach people, uh, software developers and hardware developers, how to use um, Intel gateways, Intel software, Intel software tools um, to the best advantage. Um, so we do training classes. Um, online and face-to-face. -face. Let's see, WinRiver Linux, my choice. Um, it's it's what's installed on the uh, the gateway, so that's the one I've chosen, yes. Um, Intel, Intel um, and uh, that's that's what we've we've chosen um, to get the gateway, the, the developer hub, which is the dashboard, um, up and running. Um, the systems um, that are shipping right with WindRiver Linux 7. Um, WindRiver Linux 8 is out um, as, a, as a deployment, but the devices that are in stock um, in the store were uh, developed and you know, um, built, um, designed uh, months ago, so they're running WindRiver Linux 7. Um, we've got the latest ones that we've deployed as, again, the upsquares. Um, they have got UB Linux and um, uh, Ubuntu server, so two different um, systems. It tends to be um, a Linux system that's running on these gateways, um, but the UpSquared board also supports um, Windows 10. So if you're looking to do some Windows 10 development, um, have a look at the UpSquared board from, from Aeon. Um, there's a talk from Aeon, a keynote from Aeon, um, on the calendar as well for part of DevFest. 
up. And Daniel Hongland's put in the answer. We're basically technical people who learn what Intel is doing and teach it. Yep, very well put. Daniel Homeland is um, an IoT evangelist on our team. Okay, well, thanks for attending. Appreciate it. Uh, say it, you've got my, um, my info if you'd like to do um, get in touch. Twitter, email. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well, I believe. Um, and you can get me there. All right. Thanks very much.